Good evening everybody. Time Trial, the film of David Miller's final year as a professional cyclist. What's it like? Is it any good? What does it tell us about David Miller and what does it tell us about the sport of cycling? Stick around and you'll find out. Time Trial is a film that's only just been released and let me say at the start off that the scenes filmed within the peloton are amazing. You get camera footage from the bike, from a close motorbike, from Miller himself, from riders around him, from helicopter viewpoints. But there's something about the film that adds an extra depth from what you're used to seeing on Eurosport or ITV coverage of the tour. One of the reasons is that the camera focuses on Miller as opposed to other riders. So sometimes other riders fade out and it just focuses in on Miller. The other thing that's different about it is the sound. You hear in glorious immersive sound the noise of the peloton and the noise of the riders their conversations their arguments their discussions and you get an insight into what happens in the peloton that you just don't get from watching Eurosport that coverage is absolutely superb the information about Miller himself is fascinating. The glimpses that one sees of the races, specifically the Terreno Adriatico and the Milan San Remo, are fascinating. And it gives a real insight into what it's like to be a pro cyclist, particularly a pro cyclist no longer at the top of his game. The long drag back to the team car to get the bottles, the racing back to meet up with the peloton that sped further ahead, the misery of the rain-soaked days, the wind, the cold, the trying to put on your gloves when your hands are so numb you can't feel anything, the jacket that you can't zip up, the food that you can't find, the gloves that you thought were in the car that it turns out that they're not. All of this is lovingly captured. Now Miller's final year as a pro cyclist was supposed to be his Frank Sinatra tour. He would swan around these races in his custom-made shoes, this wonderful character, this amazing cyclist, and we would see his gentle decline into a retirement, a, let's face it, wealthy, pleasant, easy retirement. And the film would document his progress. He would swan up to a race. He would take his place at the head of the peloton in front of glor glorious crowds who would cheer him on as he breasted the finish line for that one final moment. But it didn't happen. Miller's final year was a failure. He was old, he was tired, he was cold, he was weak. He didn't make the final cut for the races. He didn't make that final Tour de France that he thought he would finish one last time in front of his adoring crowds. Miller's final year was one of abject failure and the film documents this in loving detail. Now there are some weaknesses about the film. We know he takes part in the Terreno Adriatico, but it doesn't actually tell you which of the filmed sequences are from that race. You can tell which are the sequences from the Milan San Remo, but other sequences are perhaps taken out of context, they're taken out of date sequence, and it's not quite clear always what you're watching, and I think that would be better. The scenes of Miller time trialing are incredible. The speed that the camera captures, the gasping for breath as he approaches the finish line, the trouble as he has negotiating the bends, all of this is recorded in glorious detail. But one thing that Miller doesn't address 
and that is his doping past. Now, Miller is articulate, he's intelligent, he's educated, he's erudite, he came from a nice middle-class family, his parents had money. Miller was no ordinary cyclist, no two O level jobber you go straight from school at 16 to a job as a cyclist, no innocent abroad who had the excuse of not really knowing what he was doing or being given pills by people who never told him the truth. Miller was an intelligent man and he chose to cheat. He didn't take a wrong turning somewhere along the way. He didn't make a couple of mistakes. He didn't do 79 miles an hour in a 70 mile zone, which I did a few weeks ago and got a speeding ticket for. No, Miller chose to break the rules. And he did it because he thought it would make him a better cyclist. And he did it because he thought he'd get away with it. He didn't get away with it. And now he's a reformed anti-doper, like an anti-smoker who used to smoke 20 a day. I should know I was one of them. And in this film, he's asked about his doping past and he leans back in his chair and he gazes up at the ceiling and he says in this tired voice, I've done that a thousand times. I don't need to talk about it again. Well, David, I've got a surprise for you. You do need to talk about it and you need to talk about it any time somebody asks you about it because it's a key part of who you were as a cyclist and it's a key part of what you achieved as a cyclist. Now the film doesn't flinch from showing Miller's evasiveness, his desire to put that part of his history behind him. So this is a, a warts and all portrait of Miller and there's a lot of warts. There's also some nice bits. There's a scene of him in a small bedroom at some race, hotel bedroom, and he lies there with Thomas Decker, a man who plumbed the depths of descent into darkness and despair through his own drug deeds. But he shares the room with Miller, and in their two single beds, six inches apart, trying to get to sleep. And as they turn out to the lights, Miller turns to Decker and says, good night, honey. And Decker says, good night, darling. You can forgive Miller quite a lot for that sequence, but that lingering taste that I have in my mouth of the drug period that he entered with his eyes open and now faces with his eyes closed. That to me is not a weakness in the film, which is superb on so many levels, it's a weakness in Miller. The strength of Miller is that he had the courage to let this film see the light of day, to let his warts be on show. Miller, the man who is now the ambassador for Maserati, the man with his own line of achingly hip clothing, chapter three, Chapter one was his career as a racer. Chapter two was his career as a doper. Chapter three is his career as a male model. The next, David Gandhi. Now Miller is a commentator on ITV4 and he is brilliant. He is easily the best summarizer, best commentator working on the television today on cycling races. He knows his stuff and he's articulate and he can talk about it and it's clear. So this is a excellent film. Why it's called Time Trial I'm not entirely sure. Yes Miller was known as a time trialist but there's there's some attempt at how time is defeating him, how the trial of time is too much for him. But it's a, it's a play on words, it's a pun that, remark, that demands so much work, it's not really worth the candle. So, not the right title for what is an excellent film. And if you get the opportunity, go and see it. It's worthwhile. See you next time.